Welcome to the great man-made river in Libya. It's been under construction since 1985, but upon completion, it will provide water to over 35,000 acres of agricultural land, making it the world's largest irrigation project. Additionally, it will improve access to safe drinking water in Libya's cities, which will help millions of citizens and farmers with their crops. Although the exact amount spent on the project is unclear, the budget estimate was 20 to 25 billion dollars. There is one of the largest fossil water aquifer systems in the world beneath the great man-made river, the Nubian Sandstone Aquifer System. A completion date of 2030 is expected for the project, but that could be a pipe dream. Pardon the pun. Water will be delivered across Libya through a network of underground pipes under the great man-made river authority. Due to the over-exploitation of coastal aquifers, which led to seawater intrusion since the 1930s, Libya needed to find an alternative water source to meet its growing needs. In 1983, the great man-made river authority was formed following a feasibility study. A particular water volume and geographic area were served by each of the four stages of construction of the Great Man-Made River Authority. Drilling wells thousands of meters underground was the plan. A 4,000-kilometer pipeline network would then connect the wells with the coast. More than 6 million cubic meters of water would be delivered daily through these pipelines. At the Sarir Aquifer in eastern Libya, Gaddafi laid the first cornerstone for Phase 1 in the mid-1980s. Priority was given to agricultural use of the water from the Great Man-Made River Authority, followed by domestic use of the water and, finally, industrial use of the water. The people of Libya aren't this for free, however. A 1% income tax deducted from public wages. This supports the project financing through the Great Man-Made River Authority, which the rest is funded by the Libyan government. A consortium led by Frankenthal KSB Fluid Systems was awarded an $82 million contract by the Great Man-Made River Authority in October 2000 for the construction of major new pumping facilities. A $15.5 million contract was awarded to the Nippon Koi Halcro Consortium in January of the following year. After the pumping station was completed, KSB was responsible for providing technical support and servicing the plant for one year. During Phase 3, 1,200 kilometers of additional pipeline were installed, increasing the total daily supply capacity of the existing system to 3.68 million cubic meters meters and providing 138,000 cubic meters to Tobruk. By 2009, Phase 3 had been completed. Six security guards were killed when NATO warplanes attacked a pipe plant at Brega on the 22nd of July 2011. Pro-Gaddafi forces launched rockets from the building, according to NATO. Following a warning from Libya that NATO-led airstrikes could damage the Great Man-Made River project, the attack occurred shortly thereafter. The river's flow was not completely halted due to infrastructure damage, according to reports. In 1953, scientists found vast quantities of fresh water trapped in the underlying strata of the deserts of southern Libya while looking for new oil fields. There are pockets of water that are only 7,000 years old, but most of the water was collected between 38,000 and 14,000 years ago. The underground basins are divided into four major groups. An estimated 20,000 square kilometers of water can be accessed in the Libyan sector of the Kufra Basin, in the southeast of the country, near the Egyptian border. The basin covers an area of 350,000 square kilometers and is surrounded by an aquifer layer approximately 2,000 meters deep. According to estimates, the Citra Basin's 600 meter deep aquifer holds more than 10,000 square kilometers of water, while the Mazurk Basin's 450,000 square kilometers holds 4,800 square kilometers. Located between the Kagaf Arch and Jab el Sada, the Hamada and Kufra basins contain more water. Water will be transported from these aquifers to the North Coastal Belt as part of the Great Man-Made River Authority project, the world's largest engineering project. The eighth wonder of the world was intended to be the centerpiece of Gaddafi's Libyan revolution. The project was conceived in the late 1960s, and the feasibility studies were conducted in 1974, ten years after the project's conception. Five stages were designed for the project, which still has 25 years to run. Initially, each one is separate, but eventually they will be merged to create a single system. It has previously been claimed that the total expenditures were exaggerated by the Great Man-Made River Authority, but that has not been confirmed. Water is delivered by the project daily in quantities ranging from 2.5 million cubic meters to 2.5 million cubic meters per day. 
depending on events in the country. Despite Libya's political and economic instability, the great man-made river authority has operated with two of its four phases in the post Muammar Gaddafi period. A number of accidents, vandalism attempts, and maintenance operations have been reported and updated on the great man-made river authority's official Facebook page. To date, 34 pumps have been installed in the al Hassanay Sal al Jafara system, equivalent to 45.3% of the target for the year. Phase 1 and 2 In August 1991, the first phase of the project was formally inaugurated and provided 2 million cubic meters per day through a 1,200 kilometer pipeline linking As Safir and Tazerbo with Benghazi and Sitra via the Ajadabia Reservoir. Approximately a quarter of a million concrete pipe sections, 2.5 million tons of cement, 13 million tons of aggregate, 2 million kilometers of pre-stressed wire, and 85 million cubic meters of excavation went into this project, which cost $14 billion in total. Approximately 1 million cubic meters of oil are produced each day from the Tazerbo well field at a rate of 120 liters per second. There are 108 production wells, of which 98 are in use and the others are on standby. In an offline steel header tank, 170,000 cubic meters of water are collected through a collection network. To reach the second phase one, well field, the main convergence system travels 256 kilometers to the north at an average flow rate of 102 liters per second per well. 114 of the 126 production wells here produce another million cubic meters. Submersible pumps are installed at a depth of 145 meters in both Tazerbo and Sarir wells, which are about 450 meters deep. The chlorine-treated water is transported north by two parallel pipelines of 4 meters diameter to Ajdabia, 308 kilometers away. The water flows from this 900 meter diameter reservoir through two pipelines, one heading west to Sitra and the other north to Benghazi. An earth embankment and reservoir serves as the discharge point for each pipeline. Its storage capacity at Sitra is 6.8 million cubic meters and at Benghazi is 4.7 million cubic meters. Additionally, large reservoirs, 37 million cubic meters in Sitra and 76 million cubic meters in Benghazi have been constructed to store water during the summer or drought. During phase two, one million cubic meters a day of water is delivered from the fertile Fezzan region to the Jafara Plain along the western coastal belt, as well as to Tripoli. There are 127 wells in the Sarir Ketusa well field, and the well field feeds 28 million cubic meters of storage in Souk El Had, which is fed by three east-west collector pipelines. Phase three. Okay, on to phase three now. There are two main components to phase three. The first part of the plan added 1.68 million cubic meters of capacity to the existing phase one system, along with 700 kilometers of new pipelines and pumps, bringing the total capacity to 3.68 million cubic meters. As a second supply source, a new well field was dug at Al Jagbub, Port Tobruk, and the coast. In order to accomplish this, a reservoir had to be constructed south of Tobruk, and another 500 kilometers of pipeline had to be laid. Geotechnical and topographical surveys are included in the 41-month preliminary engineering and design contract. In the concept design phase, pipeline, routing, and profiling, hydraulics, pumping stations, mechanical and electrical systems, control communication systems, reservoirs, corrosion control, power, operational support, and maintenance are extensively considered. First quarter 2005 was the deadline for evaluation and detailed design tenders. Ajadabia Reservoir and a pipeline connecting it to Tobruk were part of the last two phases of the project, which also involved connecting the eastern and western systems at Citra. A former Libyan leader predicted that Irrigation water from the Great Man-Made River Authority would make the desert as green as the country's flag once the project was completed. However, the authorities have not fully considered the effects of climate conditions and change on the Great Man-Made River Authority's project, despite doing much to ensure access to water throughout the country. The project has been under constant threat of physical attack and has suffered from gross mismanagement, even as Libya's political and economic instability has made it more vulnerable. Due to the increasing demand for water in Libya, it has become increasingly important to devise alternative measures
methods for managing groundwater resources and explore other water resource development schemes, including revisiting desalination and potentially other technologies. A total of 10,000 people and 4,500 pieces of equipment are employed on the project. The Libyan Cement Company supplies 2,500 tons of cement per day to the pipe plants at Brega and Sarir in 127 cement tankers. Scientists estimate that the amount of water is equivalent to 200 years of Nile River flow. There is no doubt the Great River is a triumph against thirst and hunger and can't come any quicker in the eyes of Libyans.